Hey, future respiratory therapist. So, um, question coming at you from um, either Rozzy or Razzy. I'm not sure uh, which one, but one of those two, I'm fairly certain. And I appreciate you sending me this question because you're asking a question about a, uh, a concept that multiple respiratory therapy students, especially first year students, struggle to grasp. <laughs> And specifically, second year students struggle to remember. And so we have a concept here that is extremely important and you need to understand um, and keep these in mind, okay? Because what I do in my videos, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you see me reference when I talk to a when I talk about APRV. Okay, I talk about increasing mean airway pressure, which increases FRC, which increases total oxygenation. Now, when I say that, if you don't understand what FRC is, then me saying it means nothing. So you need to understand these terms, these volumes, and these capacities in a way that you when you hear them and when you understand what you're doing they make sense you go okay now i'm doing an inspiratory capacity maneuver okay now this patient's breathing at tidal volume now this patient is doing a vital capacity when you do a vital capacity on a patient which you will do you will monitor it okay you need to know what you're monitoring okay and so this topic which is a topic that gets a lot of times taught and then swept under the rug is extremely important and so we're going to talk about it today now how we're going to do is we're going to build on this one at a time okay now what you're going to see on this board is something that i guarantee you every one of you first year and second year respiratory therapy students have seen at some point in your time but this is really the only way to do it i just hope that talking about it in a different manner helps it sink in a little different okay so, what all of us are doing right now is breathing at a tidal volume level. Nobody here is breathing as deep as they can and then blowing it all out. And nobody is definitely on a regular basis breathing in as deep as they can and blowing it all out until they can't blow out anymore. So, for the most part, we can agree that everybody here is breathing at normal breath in and normal breath out. And that is known as tidal volume. Okay, so we're going to start there. So this is VT. Tidal volume. Okay, normal breath in, normal breath out, normal breath in, normal breath out. That's tidal volume. Okay, now from there, you know that you can breathe in deeper than what you're breathing right now. So if you're breathing right now normally, like we are, and then I say, okay, now, now this breath, I want you to breathe in as deep as you can and let it out. What you just did, okay, on top of tidal volume was breathe in your inspiratory reserve volume, which means when I need to and when I want to, I can breathe in deeper than my tidal volume, okay? That's IRV, inspiratory reserve volume, okay? Now, if we're back to breathing normal, and this time I say, now blow this one out as far as you can, then you're gonna breathe in normally and you're gonna blow it all the way out. Until you can't blow out anymore, what you just did there was tap in to your expiratory reserve volume. So we're going to put that down here. That is your ERV. Okay? So your ERV. Now, we typically don't breathe like that. And so we typically don't access our ERV. But you have to understand what it is. Okay? Now, after you've blown all of that air out, okay, do you think your lungs are completely empty? No. 
there's still a certain amount of volume that is left after you've blown out all of your expiratory reserve volume. There's still a little bit left in your lungs. And that is what we call residual volume. Okay, so we're going to put one more box here. And that's RV, residual volume. Okay, so breathing normally, you're at tidal volume. Breathe in as deep as you can. You're at inspiratory reserve volume. Okay, blow it out. Breathe normal. Blow out as far as you can. You're at expiratory reserve volume. And whatever is left is your residual volume. Okay, those are your four volumes. The cool thing about this is that there's four volumes and there's four capacities. So to simplify this, you need to understand that volumes are individual measurements. Capacities are the, are the combination of two or more volumes. Okay, so you got your four volumes here. This should make sense. Breathing normal is tidal volume. It is high as I breathe in, as deep as I can, is inspiratory reserve volume. Blow out as far as I can is expiratory reserve volume. Any volume that is left over after I've blown out everything I can is called a residual volume. Okay, so that should make sense. That's all the volume you have in your lung, which means all together, this equals total lung capacity. Now, why is this a capacity and not a volume? Why don't they call this total lung volume? Because it's a capacity. A capacity is made up of two or more volumes. Okay? So when you put all of these together, this is your total lung capacity. Okay? So, so, so that should make sense, right? Add them all up, you get total lung capacity. Now remember, we can measure tidal volume, and we can measure IRV, and we can even measure ERV. But without a pulmonary function lung volume study, we cannot measure RV. Okay? So this measurement right here has to be measured via pulmonary function test. And it's going to make more sense here in just a second. Okay? So all of these together, TLC. Okay? Now, if you're breathing at tidal volume level, okay, I'm going to draw a line right here. And you breathe in as deep as you can and then let it all out. Okay, don't force it beyond what's natural. Breathing normally and then breathing in as deep as you can. That right there was tidal volume plus IRV, which these two will equal your inspiratory capacity. Okay, so if we draw a box that includes both of these, which is what you've all seen, it's going to be the inspiratory capacity. So from tidal, some of resting tidal volume, in as deep as you can go, and then let it out normally, that's your inspiratory capacity. What does this sound like? Does this sound like a incentive spirometry maneuver? It should, because that's what it is. Okay? When you're teaching somebody how to do and instead of spirometer, they should not be breathing at tidal volume. They should be breathing in as deep as they can, holding it, and then letting it out. But they're not forcing any more air out to include ERV. You don't have somebody do a, a, a an IS maneuver, an incentive spirometry maneuver, and go, okay, breathe in as deep as you can on this next one. And they breathe in, and you say, blow it out and they blow it all the way out and you say keep going keep going keep going you don't do that on on an is an is is in as deep as you can go and let it all out naturally that is an inspiratory capacity maneuver that's a measurement of that okay it's an objective measurement of their inspiratory capacity okay so here real quick within 10 minutes we've talked about the four lung volumes We've talked about inspiratory capacity and we've talked about total lung capacity. We only have two more capacities to talk about because there are only four volumes and four capacities. So now we're going to talk about FRC. Okay, so when we talk about 
FRC, okay, then what we need to understand is when we have our patients, when we have our patients take in this deep breath, so they breathe in as deep as they can from resting state, they breathe in as deep as they can, they can, but then you have them blow it out until they can't blow out anymore. So do an IS, but then have them blow it all the way out until they can't blow out anymore. So, and then out. And keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And I can't go anymore? That includes tidal volume, IRV, and ERV. So if we draw a box here, Okay, then this is our vital capacity. This is what you do when you're assessing patients for either impending vent failure with neuromuscular diseases, or maybe you're doing it to assess readiness for weaning, but you do a vital capacity. You want to see what this patient's max inspiratory capacity is plus their ERV. Okay? So that is your vital capacity. Now, I told you that the IC is IRV and tidal volume. The VC is IRV, tidal volume, and ERV. There's one more capacity that fits just underneath IC. Okay? Now, when you do an IC and the patient breathes out normally to baseline, there's still ERV and RV left in the lungs. This is how most people are breathing. Even if they just do a tidal volume, breathing normally, in, out, right there, stop right there. At the end of exhalation, you still have ERV left and you still have residual volume left. And that is your FRC, your functional residual capacity. Okay, and that's it. That's your four lung volumes, and that's your four capacities. Now, how do you calculate them from here? Comes down to understanding which volumes create which capacities. So if I tell you that you have a patient who has an FRC, okay, of, I'm just gonna throw this out there, of one liter, and their RV is 400 milliliters, then their ERV has to be 600 milliliters because 400 plus 600 is 1,000, which is one liter, okay? If I tell you somebody has a tidal volume of, of, of 400 and an inspiratory capacity of... 2400 then you have to understand that this is 2400 and this is 400 then 2400 minus 400 means that the IRV has to be 2000 milliliters okay and if I told you that that same person who has a a um A, a tidal volume of 400 and an IRV at 2,000, okay? If I told you that they had a vital capacity of 3,500, then that would mean that 3,500 minus the 2,400 means that their ERV would be 1,100 because 3,500 minus 2400 equals 1100 so their ERV must be 1100 1100 okay plus 400 plus 2000 equals 3500 that's their vital capacity okay so the calculating part is secondary to understanding which volumes make up which capacities. That's 
That's the underlying message here. It's like there's no secret. I can't. I cannot give you a secret to calculating capacities. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. There's no simplification. It all begins with fundamental knowledge base and understanding which volumes make up which capacities. And when you're told those volumes, or if you're given capacities and one volume, then you have to understand, okay, the other party is tidal volume, or the other party is ERV. Okay? That's, that's the most simplistic way you can break this down. The focus here is learning the volumes and which volumes make up which capacities. I hope this helped. This is a tough concept, especially when you try to memorize it. But when you try to make sense of it, the words kind of make sense. We know tidal volume is normal breathing. Inspiratory volume, inspiratory reserve volume would be, oh, how much inspiratory reserve do I have? Which is how much higher can I go above tidal volume, right? Expiratory reserve volume, how much lower can I go from tidal volume? And then residual volume is what's left over that you can't measure. That you can with a PFT, but it's what's left over after you've blown everything out. And then understanding that inspiratory capacity makes up your inspiratory efforts. FRC makes up your resting expiratory efforts. Vital capacity makes up as much as you can breathe in to as much as you can blow out. And then when you add an RV to that, you will get total lung capacity. Leave me comments, leave me questions, leave me concerns. Please subscribe, please like, love these questions. I love helping understand these concepts. I hope this helps. If it does, let me know. If it doesn't, let me know. I'll do another video. Best wishes, guys.